Now we're going to talk in some detail about probably the simplest example of a random variable, the so-called Bernoulli random variable, as well as a slightly more complicated idea of the binomial distribution. A Bernoulli random variable is a random variable defined over a sample space with two possible outcomes. It takes the value 1 with probability p and 0 with probability 1 minus p. Often we call 1 success and 0 failure. For a sample space with only two possible outcomes, make sure you understand why probabilities can be written as p and 1 minus p. The probability density function and cumulative distribution function are very simple since there are only two possible values for the random variable. Pause the video if necessary and make sure you understand why these functions take the values that they do. A typical probability thought experiment is to imagine n independent experiments, like n coin tosses, and try to answer questions like, in 10 coin tosses, what is the probability of getting 5 heads? In cases like this, enumerating the sample space is very difficult, so we have to use other approaches. To set things up, let's say we have a coin where the probability to land on heads is p. For most coins, p is 1 half, but we'll let it be any number between 0 and 1. We assign a Bernoulli random variable, so heads gives us 1 and tails corresponds to 0. Now we ask the question, what is the probability of k heads in n coin flips? We answered questions like this before for pairs of dice by enumerating the sample space. However, as n grows, the size of the sample space grows rapidly. I'll leave it as another exercise to show that the sample space has 2 to the power n possible elements in it. To calculate probabilities efficiently, we need to take a different approach than enumeration. The first fact we used is that the experiments are independent. As we showed when we discussed conditional probability, this means we can multiply the probabilities. Therefore, k successes has a probability of p to the power k. I'm using the squiggle rather than equality for now because we'll modify this in a minute. If there are k successes, the rest must have been failures because there are only two possible outcomes. There are n minus k remaining experiments, so the probability of getting n minus k failures is 1 minus p to the power of n minus k. Again, pause here and make sure you understand why. So in our experiment, the probability of k successes and n minus k failures is the product of these two probabilities, or at least it's partly right. We have to account for the fact that there are many ways for k successes and n minus k failures to occur. In the coin tossing example, in three coin tosses, we might get two heads in, three of, in the following three ways, heads, heads, tails, heads, tails, heads, or tails, heads, heads. In general, the number of ways to get k successes in n trials is n choose k, which is how you read this symbol. n choose k is given by this formula, where the exclamation mark is read as factorial, and it means to take the product of n with all the integers less than n down to 1. We can understand this by thinking about how we allocate k successes in n spaces. For our first success, we have n slots where we could place it. For our next success, we have n minus 1 remaining slots to place it in. We keep going until we have placed all the successes where we have one fewer slot each time. For n equals 7 and k equals 4 as we have here, check that this formula makes sense to you. We then note that as the successes are unlabeled, it doesn't matter the order we add them in if we end up with the same final arrangement. This means that the previous formula overcounts as it treats all the examples on the left as distinct. By a very similar argument to the one we just did, if there are k places to put successes, this means there are k factorial ways to arrange these successes. So we must divide by this factor to correct our overcounting. Putting that all together and doing some algebra, we have n choose k ways to obtain k successes in n trials. Combining this factor with the probabilities for each outcome, the probability to observe k successes in n trials is n choose k times p to the power of k times 1 minus p to the power of n minus k, and this is known as the binomial distribution. It looks like this, and we will study it more in the exercises.